a little bit, probably a little bit more since there's a note here about what happened. I don't have a really exciting death experience for you, but I will tell you what happened is I overworked myself. You understand that. Went too many years with no rest in working in a hospital setting, and what basically happened is I developed a duodenal ulcer. And uh, then I developed, and this took a long time, but then I developed pneumonia, and it was a pretty <coughs> nasty couple bugs, a couple of super bugs. And I didn't have insurance, didn't have um, money, and I had a kid to take care of, so I just kept working. So I worked myself to death. Literally, worked myself to death, isn't that great? That's funny. <laughs> so the duodenal ulcer perforated. The drainage from the, the, uh, the superbugs went out into my gut, and it caused uh, septic shock. And Stephanie here found me on, my, on the floor next to my bed, eyes rolled up in my head, uh, being near dead. So she called her brother, that was a waste of time. <coughs> he freaked out, he's seven years older than her, and he threw her the phone and said, call 911. So she took care of it, she was 16, mm -hmm. seven, 16 at the time. So she called 911, they came and got me in the ambulance and shipped me off. Now as you know, septic shock is hard to keep anybody alive in the hospital. And it's similar to if somebody's appendix rupture, be similar to that, that was the effect of it. And basically I was in the hospital for 30 days almost, and I was on every machine they had. They tried to ship me to down, I was in Houston area at the time. They tried to life flight me down to the medical center, the big hospitals, because I was in a little hospital in one of the little towns, the suburbs. And uh, they tried to life flight me, which would have been a five minute flight several times, and every time they tried to ship me, I would fail. They told the kids, what, for <coughs> half the time, two weeks, and as you know, we don't tell people. Oh, no, people it was dying. right up until, like, right up. three days you woke up. So, woke we're, up. we're talking almost three weeks here, <clears throat> and we don't tell people anymore that somebody's going to die unless they are really going to die. We just don't do that because we can save them so much now. So, they told the kids every day for almost three weeks that mm -hmm. I wasn't going to make the night. Now, I was kind of float. I was having a good time. Can you imagine what they were having? Three weeks of being told, and then I'd rally. I'd, I'd fail at night, then I'd rally the next morning, and I'd live. And uh, so that's what happened. That was the story physicality-wise. And then I woke up in the hospital and <coughs> was majorly pissed off. And fell on your face. Yeah, got it. Fell on my face. I did not realize when I woke up that I'd been in a coma for 30 days at all. You know, I knew that I woke up in the hospital. I was fairly sure I was going to because I am a pretty darn good nurse. I was assessing myself all the way through this. I told Stephanie what was wrong with me without being diagnosed. I said, okay, if I fall out, as a matter of fact, I think I said the night before this mm -hmm. happened, that if I didn't get better the next day, I would take myself to the ER. Now, the way I was raised, if you don't have money, you don't go. So up until this point, that's the reason why I didn't go. I went, hey, if I die, I die. I didn't have the money to go, I won't go. So anyway, I got shipped. And what happened, now the fun part, that's the boring part, I don't care about that, that's not the interesting thing, the interesting thing is much more fun. So basically up until that time I had worked very, very hard, I had a really, really tough life, bad, bad, bad childhood, very, very aware of Christian beliefs, I was raised Church of Christ, my dad's a preacher, very aware, and for those of you who don't, although you should know what a Church of Christ is, it's very much like Baptist, hard, hard line. No fun, no dancing, no drinking, no smiling. <laughs> They're the church that do not have a piano in their, in their building. So that's how hardcore they are about everything. So I'm very aware of it now, contrary to what you would probably think about. And my dad's an asshole. He's very abusive. So is my mother. But I never, I always liked God. I always believed in that religion because... I kind of wrote my dad off as a jerk, a sinner, or whatever, and I went straight to the Heavenly Father. I went, well, he's not really my dad. You're my dad. So I talked to him all the time. I didn't have any problem at all with that religion. However, I grew up, and I went, well, that's not fair. What are the chances of me being born in the world, the daughter of the right religion? I mean, astronomical odds. So I was talking to God, and I said, God, you know, no offense, 
But the odds are not good that I got the right religion in this deal. I have not been lucky in anything else. Why would that be luck? So I went out and looked at all the other religions, found, just like he said, ridiculous amount of opinion. But what I did find throughout all of them was this thing called love. And so I became kind of a lovist. <laughs> and I went, okay, well, I'm going to go with the love thing. And then I got married, had kids, and religion kind of went on a back burner. Got divorced twice, single mom. I had bigger things to worry about than where I was going to go when I died. So I just kind of went, I, I'm just going to love everything and everybody. Kind of, I kind of went with, if everybody did that, things would be a whole lot better here. If y'all start fussing about the rest of it, and kind of went with that. And then just lived until I died. Okay, now I died. Now, the first thing that I can, I, I remember all of it. It's never gone away. It's not like human memories. Like if I ask you what you had for supper last Tuesday, you're going to go, I don't know. These are memories that are outside human brain. So they never faded and they never will. I know they won't. It's been 10 years. It's happened in 2008, by the way. So it, it never fails. I mean, none of it goes away. Not one bit of it, thank goodness. So, and thank that. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. <clears throat> really, you'll see why. So the first thing that I remember is I remember coming out of my body and I was right above my body when it first when it first came out of my body. And the thing that I remember the most was relief. That the pain was gone because I'd been operating this whole thing with the sickness thing that happened over two or three years. I'm German blood and I'm tough. So I fought it for a long time. So when I stepped out of it, I just remember the pain being gone. It was just no pain. And I went, whoa. This is great. And then I remember looking around and I'd go and, and I floated even higher, what you would think of as higher. Now, I'm going to use terms like, because you're in linear time space. So even though I'm going to tell you there's no such thing as linear time space, that that's all an illusion, part of this game, but it's the only thing I can use to talk to you. So understand that. I'm going to say before and after. I'm going to say higher and lower. I'm going to probably say in and out. That's simply to talk to you. It's, in, in reality, there's no such thing of any of that. <clears throat> and I can explain that if somebody wants to know the best that I can. Um, and, and in this, at this particular stage, I was in linear time space still. I was still operating within linear time space. So I raised myself, and of course, I'm an ER ICU nurse. And I was in the ER. So I floated up to the ceiling. I could look down on my body. I wasn't shocked by that. I wasn't scared by that. I was watching everybody to see what they were doing. I heard what they said. I knew what was, that my, my body was down there, and I was up here, and it was no big deal. I knew that my body wasn't doing well, but I wasn't hurting, so I was good with that. I watched because I was curious. This was a hospital that I actually worked in as an agency nurse, but I never worked the ER. I knew these people, so I wanted to know how they did, and they did beautifully under very, very difficult circumstances. And I was pretty impressed. So I stayed there until I was bored. And I went, uh, say she stayed there and watched what was going on. Yeah, I stayed there and watched, <laughs> make sure they was doing what they were doing, what they was doing. Technically, they did a beautiful job. So I, my body was fine, and I knew that. So I floated up a little bit higher. And the next thing that I was, all of it was based on what I wanted to do. And I don't care what any indie ear tells you, nobody makes you do anything. What frequently happens is if, the, they'll see something, or they'll see something that will send them back. But that's them creating a circumstance to get them to come back, because on a higher level, that's what they're meant to do. So from your human perspective, you only have this much. But you're connected to higher, what I call your higher self, who really has a higher perspective. It's like you are the ant on the ground walking around, but you're connected to an eagle part of yourself that can see a bigger picture that can say, okay, ant, you're fixing to go straight into a river that you cannot swim around, so turn around. And if you listen, you can turn around. You don't have to listen to your higher self. You can go right in that river and drown. Totally up to you. You do control things, and that's the difference between what people say predestination and not. And I can explain that in a minute anyway, but let's go further up a little bit. So the next thing that I did is I went up and I was raised Church of Christ. So the next thing I was interested in is where do people go when they die? Immediately, I could see everyone who is dying, who ever did die, off this planet. Now, I know that sounds overwhelming to you guys. It really isn't. 
It really isn't. Now think of it from the perspective of a two-year-old to who you are now. Okay? A two-year-old looks around and this is a big world and everything is complex, right? But they don't have no idea what they're going to have whenever they're you guys' age. There's a big difference between those two. That's not uncomprehendable at mm -hmm. all. Well, this is the same way. You just grow up even more. Outside the body, you, you realize that there's a lot more out there. And so I, I kind of use the analogy is just think of yourself and you're in a, and I'm going to do this girly. Sorry, guys, just go with me. I am a girl. Just think that you go into the most beautiful flower garden you've ever seen and you go and you stand, sit on the ground in front of the most beautiful rose bush you've ever seen and you find one rose and you focus on that rose and everything in your being focuses on that rose, right? Okay, you can do that and you know you can do that. Guys, you can do it on... Take your pick. I don't care. Pick something. And you can focus on that rose and you can really look at each petal and the color and the dew and everything about it to the point everything around it disappears. Yes? Okay? Now imagine that in death what I did was I stopped and I pulled back. And now I didn't just see the rose. I didn't just see the bush. I saw the rose and then the bush. So now I'm seeing all of it going whoa, whoa. Now I back up and I see the garden. I back up and I see the, and I can see everything about all of this. I see the city, I see the country, I see the planet, I see the galaxy, I see the solar system, I see, and far, far beyond. That's what I did. And what happened with a lot of indie ears, what you do is you go where you're interested in. Like I said, I pulled back and the next thing I wanted to know is where people, what happened to them when they died. Long story short of this, you go where you expect to go. If you expect that you're going to go to hell, believe me, you go there. Very quickly, though, very quickly, you figure out that you made this up and you get out. The interesting thing and the thing that I have always found the funniest of everything I think that, the funniest thing that ever happened to me whenever I died, is I would see people that were Christian that would go to heaven. Now, everybody that's a Christian, and I've heard people talk about this, you've got a long list of people that are going to hell. We'll start with an easy one. Hitler's going to be there, right? And a long list of friends and enemies that you do not like. They're going straight to hell, right? Hell is full. So when people die and they don't think that they're good people, they'll go directly to hell. And it is every bit as bad as what you think it's going to be. The more you've read about the Bible, the worse it becomes. And it is full of all those people that you think belong there. Or what looks like them, anyway. Okay, so that lasts a while, but people quickly come out and they go, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's not right. And they come out. Then they go on to other places, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the funniest thing is, the Christians who believe in heaven get out even faster than the hell people do. The reason why is because in Christianity, you believe that there's going to be big old mansions of gold and streets of silver, whatever, whatever, whatever. You also don't believe very many people are going to be there. How many people do you say, yeah, they're going straight to heaven? The only time you say that is when they're dead and you feel bad. <laughs> then all of a sudden they're going to heaven. But mostly in people's minds, they're going, ah, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. So once you're there, what happens? Well, God's running the show, right? You don't know what you're going to do, but God's going to take care of it. So person after person after person would show up in their hell with, the map, with all this might have God up on the throne way, way, way far away. Maybe some chorus of angels. Then they're walking down the street generally alone. Maybe they run into Mary if they're Catholic. Maybe a Jesus here and there. But mostly they're alone and bored, stiff. Nothing is going on. Why? Because you go where you believe. You, you're at a standstill. You thought somebody else was going to take care of the itinerary. There's no itinerary. So people very, very quickly turn around and go, uh... This doesn't seem right. And the second you are willing to look somewhere else, then you get a bigger story and you're gone. Then there's all kinds of others. Any, any kind of place. The ones that stayed the longest are people that believe like my mother. My mother believes that heaven would be like Wyoming. That it would be fishing next to a perfect brook. Uh, surrounded by people that you care about. Anybody who created that, they usually stayed the longest. And it was just peace. If you come off of this planet, you just want peace. Just just leave me alone. That's all people want, usually. So they would stay the longest. But usually nobody stayed at any of those places very long. 
And then the next thing that I did is I snapped out of time space. And I remember the moment clearly. I mean, it was just probably one of the biggest things that happened to me was I went from time space to now time. And I'm going to call it now time because I don't know what else to call it. But it is simply where everything is in the now, that there is no linear time space. It doesn't exist. And I know that the second it happened, I was looking back and I realized that I'd come out of the game of linear time space. And in that moment, I couldn't remember how it worked. I knew that I came out of it. But just like you in linear time space can't fathom now time, when you're in now time, you can't fathom linear time space. You, you know it exists. It exists. You know it's a game that you can play, but you don't remember how it works. It's mind-boggling. So I do remember that I went into now time. Now I'm having fun. Now I'm just... And I remember none of this was fear. And I'm a very intellectual, I like fact person. So did I feel that unconditional love? Yeah. But to me that was secondary. It was not as important. With me, it tra translated not so much as love as most people related. To me, it was relief. It was, I didn't have to worry about anything. There was no pressure. There was no, um, there was a total acceptance. And the second I went into now time, it was like that was a given. That was nothing that you worried about or you thought about. It was, it was a given. And at that moment, it wasn't anything extraordinary. So when I go to report something like this, I'm going, well, yeah, it was love, because we all have love. And in now time, I immediately was back with what, I merged back in what people call source or God or all that is. I say all that is. I don't say God. I was raised to Church of Christ. I have very big triggers on that word. So I don't use it. I don't have a problem with anybody else using it. Source has become New Agey God in almost a cultish like way. So I don't like using source. Again, it... It makes it seem like sources out there, and you're here, and you're not. All of this is a part of all that is. You just are in amnesia to play a game. That's all. <clears throat> you don't have to go anywhere to merge with anything. Nobody is over you. you. You are a god in your own right. You are a part of all this. You have all the power. You always have. You do. It's what quantum mechanics teaches us. Now, I know they say that on an atomic level, but everything is made of atoms, including you. So if quantum mechanics works on an atom, it works on everything. So, yeah, I'm going to go into that because that's like a whole different story. <laughs> so now I think what happens between the end of years and me and the difference is that I just kind of kept going. Is I remember I, I just kept going from the second I got up to a certain point, somewhere between watching people die and now time, I just went, what else? What else? What else? What else? And that's what I just kept. I just kept going. And I kept seeing things, and I kept going, and kept going, and kept going. And I went, what felt like to me, now I've said at the beginning it was like years, because I was tentative about what I said, but in truth it was like a couple hundred years, maybe more, that I felt like I was gone. I just was, there was so much out there. And I didn't stop, and I went way, way, way further than anybody I've ever heard of. And I do remember I was in another game, completely another game. I'll explain the game thing with the whiteboard. But a whole other game. And I remember thinking, remember this vividly, I remember saying, you know what? I should go back to that earth place and try this. And bam, I woke up in the hospital. And the point of that statement is that is how powerful you are. You are that powerful. You make things happen that quick. The only reason why you don't know that is because a part of this game includes time, space. And it's that delay that you don't realize you're creating things. You're creating things, it's just, it's on a delay. So it gets filled in with other things, and the game is set into motion. So it makes you look like it's not you. It is all you. It's always been you. Always will be you. But you came to play a game that m meant, basically, if you're here, I, I put... Generally, people in two categories. I put them in what I call long-term humans, although they're not all long-term <coughs> humans. And they're the majority of the people on the planet. And I call them the extreme sports nuts of the entity world, the, the spirit world. Because this is bar... And I went a long ways, guys. I couldn't even begin to count the number of games that I was in, looked at, played with. This is by far the most difficult. 
It is known for being difficult. It is not the fun game. There are lots and lots of fun games. This isn't it. This isn't it at all. So, nothing wrong with it. All games are valid. All fit, games are great. It's just, this is a difficult one. People come here because it's difficult. It's the point. It is, and people say, well, why would I do that to myself? Well, humans climb up Mount Everest with no oxygen. Why would they do that to themselves? It's the same concept. You do it to yourselves because very few people have done it, because it's exciting, because it's difficult, because at the end of the day when you come out and you die and you go to the other side, you can go, oh, I did that. It's very much, if you want to know what life is for on all the games, it is about experience. And that is the tricky part because people here in linear time space, in duality, which is another part of this game that's a big, big, big thing, is duality. It's... It's, I kind of, I say to the younger generation, it's like playing a video game, a really good one, very virtual reality video game. To older people that don't play video games, I say it's a very good play or movie that you're an actor in. And you are a method actor. You are in it to believe it totally. But at the end of the day, you are going to die. And when you die and go to the other side, which by the way, I'm a promoter, I'm a promoter of death. Death is awesome. Nothing to be afraid of. It's right over there. When you die, I guarantee you, you're going to go into now time, at, at which point everybody's dead, and you're going to do the equivalent of having an after party after a play. Everybody, good guy, bad guy, when somebody's in a movie or a play and they're a bad guy, you don't hate them. You know that they're acting, right? And if you're acting the part of the good guy against the bad guy, you're going to play it for all it's worth just like the bad guy's going to be. But at the end of the day, when the play's over, you go to the other side, it's like, that was great fun, let's do it again. And these guys do. They do it millions and millions of lifetimes, <coughs> over and over again. Long-term humans do. They love the game. They love this game. Now there's people like me. Uh, this is my first life here. I'm not coming back. I came for a very specific reason. And all of the... Everything has consciousness. Everything. This has consciousness. Atoms have consciousness. The consciousness, it is the human ego that they think that they're the only ones that have got it together, that they've got a brain, that they've got a consciousness, that they've got it. That, that's not true. As a matter of fact, humans are probably the least conscious beings on this planet by far because the, they came for the illusion that they're not connected to source, that they're not gods, that, that is all part of the game. But everything around you, the plants, the animals, the air that you breathe, those are all consciousness that came to play supporting roles so you can play this game, whatever game you came to play. All right? So, if anybody has any questions, be sure to ask. Talk about duality. At the, at the, the beginning of this, ooh. All right. You guys have all created games. Oh, well, let's talk about how big this game is first. Um, please, hand, hand me that whiteboard. <laughs> hand me that whiteboard, assistant. David, why don't you put one of those chairs over there to sit that on? Wait a second. Now, I'm letting you get the Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got it. Yeah, I don't want to put it on that. I'm not crash the TV. But you guys need, you need to understand, hopefully I can, this is really hard and I need you to really, really expand your minds, okay? Really try to stick with me on this because you got to understand that number one, how little this game is, how little this place is, how little this planet is, and how little your life is, but... Your moment, every moment, every thought, every deed changes everything. In everything. It's magnificent. That was a line, by the way, in Contact. Contact? Yeah, Contact. Anybody ever see that movie, mm -hmm. Contact? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember when she was like on the stand and she was going, I wish that I could put this in front of all of you or inside of all of you, that you could understand how tiny we are, but how significant we are. And that's very, 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 very true. There's also infinite timelines, too. Makes it even more interesting. Yeah, that's what, right. that's what blows my mind. Yeah. Okay. And that gets to be even kind of difficult for anybody to talk about. 
because you can't comp because that goes into an infinite and infinite is difficult when you're in time space okay so here is here is the planet there's the planet earth and around it there's our solar system here's our galaxy the galaxy okay mm -hmm. now take this right here that whole galaxy and as you guys have probably heard galaxy wise that's milky way status we're talking the whole shebang which inside that whole shebang we're a tiny little dot and on that tiny little dot you're a tiny little dot okay now they they now know your scientists now know that there are billions of these solar systems okay this is what you know in third dimension what i call third dimension that's what you know and that's what you know so far it's way bigger than what you know just like you didn't know there were billions of those probably when I was a kid. We didn't know that. Well, there's a lot more, okay? Now you take all of what I just described and everything you don't know, and you put it in this dot now. Now it's the size of the planet, okay? Everything that you know. That's in the third dimension. Now, if you can, all of this out here is what I call the fourth dimension. Okay, so now we've got all of those billions upon billions of solar systems inside that dot. And inside this game, so the fourth dimension, this out here is what we call, all this fourth dimension out here, that's what you guys would call aliens. And that's how big it is. So the fourth dimension is probably the biggest dimension in this game, I would say, and it is in linear time space. Now, fourth dimension stands for that they can mess with time and space. So that is why the aliens can do what they do. And there's a bunch of, way more than what you guys know. Because I said, everything that you know is in that tiny dot. Fourth dimension with all the aliens is all out here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a bunch of aliens. And they're way, 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 way ahead of you guys. You guys are like, you know, you're playing the role of like two-year-olds. And these guys up here are quantum phys physicists. They know what they're doing. They consider you to be very similar to what you would consider a chimpanzee. Or a rat, even. That's how they look at humans. It's no disrespect meant. Uh, they admire humans. Well, some of them do and some of them don't. Yeah, it depends upon which alien. It's just like there's good people and there's bad people. This is still duality. There are good aliens and there are bad aliens, according to what you would say. However, most humans do not have much problems with humans <coughs> doing all kinds of testing and stuff on rats, right? Wouldn't think twice about it. Well, out here, they don't think twice about doing stuff to humans because it's usually to help their race. Just like humans mess with rats so that they can help their race. Okay? That's how it's done. So when you're listening to things that are going on with aliens, keep that in mind. That's, it's, it, that's kind of the relationship. That's how it's looked at. Okay? And none of these guys out here, it's all a part of the game. So, okay, now you've got fourth dimension. Now, put all of that... Put all the third, this dot, and all of this, fourth dimension, in this dot. You, are you with me on the magnificently hugeness of this so far? Okay, now we're going to go to the fifth dimension. It's where I'm going. Okay, this is, this is the place that's within the game still of duality that she was talking about. But it is where resistance is more magical. It's what you would consider magic. Where... You start to come out of your amnesia. You're still in physicality. You're still in your physical bodies. Your physical bodies would look very different than they do right now, but you wouldn't notice it, not in 5D. But you start to remember that you're a god. So you don't have to work for a living, and you don't build houses, and you don't have to eat, and you just play. You play on this planet. It's a very fun place. It's the only fun place in this game as far as I'm concerned. Now, all of fifth dimension, that's a whole... This, I'll hold this again... And now we're down five dimension, fifth dimension, down to third dimension. In this game is now this dot, okay? Now we're just going to, because you can't even begin to comprehend the dimensions that are above that, to go to source, so we're just going to take all of that, put it inside the dot again, all right? Now this dot, with everything I just described, with you being this microscopic part of an atom within it, in your life, now take all of that, which is what I call this game, Throw it up into the sky, make it one star, just one, and look at all the other stars. Those are all the other games that you can play once you die. 
and many, many, many more. Okay, that's how big this is. All right, so Can now. Castilla time space? How did. Mm -hmm. Is that Castilla time space? No, once you got. Time space is very seldom used. That's within this game. And it's really from 5D down to create it. Now, what the game is, this game is, and this dude who's no better, no worse than you, you've created your own games that are just as big as this. But there was an entity, and he came up with a really unique <coughs> thought. Because he's a son of a bitch, that's why. He said, okay, well, what would happen, and, and again, there's no such thing as time space, but I'm going to use it because I don't have a choice. I'm gonna, what would happen if you take an area of source, and here's the area of source, and what if, because everything is now becomes vibration, so the physical stuff that you feel through the five senses of being in this skin suit, now you've got way more senses, because you're not in this physical body anymore, you're something completely different, think energy being. But, and everything becomes vibrationally based. Everything that I do is vibrationally based, which it already is for you too. You just don't realize it. Your eyes translate vibrations. Your ears translate vibrations. Your hands and touch is vibrational. All of it. Your heart works off electricity. That's vibration. All of it is vibrational. You just don't realize it most of the time. And you've got five senses. That's it most of the time. Five. Five. There's infinite senses. And you've got it narrowed down so you can focus on this game in a very specific way. You did that on purpose so it would come down to a very minimal thing. So that you could really focus on something. Rather than being out here and seeing it all, you said, okay, I'm going to be very precise. I'm going to be the watchmaker. And I'm only going to like mess with this thing in my life. The rose. I'm going to look at the rose. Not everything else. I'm going to look at the rose. That's what you're doing here. You're looking at the rope. So at the beginning of this game, even though there's no such thing as beginning and end, this entity said, well, what if I took a bit of the space? And this is actually in the Bible, by the way. It's in a lot of religions. He said, what if I took a certain amount of space and I divide it? Divide it. Now, this was an arbitrary division, by the way. And we're going to call him he. He said, oh, okay, let's take and put these vibrations on this side and these vibrations on this side. Let's separate them. It was just purely ar arbitrary. This is what the Bible says, let there be light, let there be dark. And in, in you guys' terminology, half of this became light, half of it became dark. That was the first split in, in creation of the dualistic concept. Okay? And all games are created by gods to experience something. That's what we do. We play. Non-stop. That's what we do. That You have always been, you will always be playing, experiencing stuff. We experience stuff, we create stuff, we experience stuff, we create stuff endlessly. Great fun. Okay, so this guy said, okay, we're going to divide these into two. And that's how it started out. That was the first split. The second split was actually what you would call, and I'm going to take it this way, like this, because it's really the more accurate. And the second split that happened was what you would consider masculine and feminine energies. Not females and men, masculine and fem feminine energy. Completely different. And that was the second split that happened. Okay? And in these divisions, now it starts what we call fractaline. And you've probably heard that. Is it became this, about this time, the first split. What happens is the first person that starts these games will start a game and since we're in now time, everybody's connected. You know what's going on with everybody at all times. So somebody would have seen that this game was starting. And instantly there are other creator entities that are going, whoa, that sounds interesting. So they come a running. And they come a running saying, I want to play. I want to play. So you've got other entities jumping in there and they'll go, okay, well, what if we did this? And what if they did this? So there is not one creator of any game. It is a bunch of creators <clears throat> that play in these games. And now there's a whole bunch more. So because when you come into the game, you throw in your two cents worth. And you start playing with everybody else. So at this point up here, you wouldn't recognize it from your human self. But this was, oh, further a long time ago than you would even be able to fathom. But way down in this fractaling where it divided and divided and divided and divided, it becomes very, very complex. Down here. Oh, thank you. Down here, way, 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 way into the game, after a whole bunch of this is done, 
time space was inserted into the game. And then the game got intense and, and the players decided to make it well. When you're on the other side, you know you're a god. You know that you can, you have access to all knowingness, you have access to each other. It's no big deal. I know it sounds like a big deal, but I promise you it is no big deal. You will find out for yourself someday. But there's the extreme people that I were talking to that went, what if I didn't know that I was a god? What would that be like? So the game was afoot. Somebody came up with that bright idea and said, I want to see what it is like to not remember that I'm a god. Okay, game, game on. So just fathom for a minute. I want to have a talk with that person. <laughs> well... You introduce you. You were you were you <laughs> jumped there. in, you're here, there. you agree. So anyway, the process of taking an entity to the place where it forgets it's a god is tremendously complicated. Tremendously. Now, since it's the people that I know here, can you imagine? One God, one God that knows that they're a god and can spread the word, would destroy all of this in a heartbeat. All of it. And the game's off. Well, that's why long-term humans, if you give them too much information, they get very angry. Well, they've spent a long-term human has done this for millions to billions to sometimes trillions of lifetimes to get to the point that they have absolute amnesia so they can play the game. You come in and you introduce somebody like me, comes in and throws this in their face, get very angry. Well, I don't blame them. If I'd been here for trillions of lifetimes, I'd get angry too, get out of my face. I worked hard to get here to, to forget that I'm a god so I can play from this perspective. It's absolutely, nobody thought it could be done, by the way. Nobody thought it could be done. Most of the people here were on the other side watching this game, and it's been going on a long time. Most of you guys, I, I, I give the analogy, you're sitting in a pub with your friends, Watching the game from afar going, that would never work for me. There is no way I would ever forget who I really am. And then you pop in here, then you pop out, because trust me, this life is very short in the scheme of things. You pop out and you're back at the pub and you're going, oh my God, that really worked. I completely forgot who I was. That is amazing. And that's what people frequently get hooked on, is that difference between... Who we are and who we've forgotten who we are. And it is a magnificent difference. Not my thing. It's not my gig. I won't be coming back. But it, I understand the draw. Now from the outside, with everything being energetic, this creation, this game that's being played, from an energetic standpoint, is magnificent. There's nothing like it. There are beings all over the place <laughs> watching this. Because it is so... It is like the most intricately woven tapestry ever that you can imagine. The most beautiful, multidimensional thing that you can imagine. But in order to create that on an energetic level, it takes getting down to some pretty heavy-duty stuff. And that is what I call the third dimension, which we are just coming out of. Third dimension, tough shit, man, tough. I mean, it is deep, dark, heavy slogging through things. It's, I, I say it's like moving through tar. It's like trying to walk through tar up to your neck. For me, that's what it feels like coming from where I come from, where, where I can move quickly and easily. But it slows us, God selves, down to the point that we look at things, create things whether you know it or not, on an extremely intricate low vibrational, slow vibrational level that creates the tiny little stitching of this magnificent tapestry that is this game. That is very, very, very unique. Now, on, in that game coming down, third dimension was the thing that everybody was trying to get to. Because third dimension is pure amnesia. It is absolute amnesia of forgetting who you are completely. With that, what happened that nobody saw coming, by the way, because everybody creates games that are supposed to be fun. That's, that's the key here. We most of the time do that. But it got to be so deep that you you create things because you don't know what's going to happen. You, you know, you start throwing. It's like having a kitchen with everything you can imagine. You start going, 
well, I'm bored with all the recipes I know, so I'm going to just start grabbing stuff and throwing it together and see what happens. And magnificent things happen. And that's what we do out there, by the way, whenever we're creating stuff. So everybody kept watching this going, well, how far is this going to go? I mean, how deep can it go? How, how much can be created here? And so we just kept going and kept going. And they'll keep going, by the way. There's already planets that are in what you would consider second dimension. You wouldn't understand it, couldn't comprehend it, but it'll keep going <coughs> forever. There will be, humans have to put numbers on things, so I did it, three, four, and two, and one, but it'll keep going in, to infinity. <coughs> and they'll keep on doing what they're doing because they're insane is what they are. They're crazy. But I understand what, they're, what the excitement is all about. And I tell people, because people are always going, well, I would never do this to myself on purpose. I would never put up with this pain or this loss or this struggle. And I went, well, you're here, so obviously you did. And the reason why is the same reason people get on scary roller coasters. You know it's going to hurt. You know it's going to bump. You know there's a risk. But you get on it anyway. And then you get off of it. It goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And you go, whoa. Whoa, 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 and you get off and you go, whoa, that was fun. And you get in line and do it again. That's what this life is. It is not the only game in town, but it is the game you are in right now. It won't last forever. When you die, there's nobody over there going to thump you on the head and say, good job, bad job. No, whatever you did is perfect. You cannot get it wrong. You cannot get it wrong. The only reason that you think that you need to go from here to here is because you are in the illusion of time space. If you weren't in that, you would you're you've got beginning and end, good or good and bad, better, bad, um, good guy, bad guy. But in the end, this is a game you are playing in, you will leave it eventually, one way or the other, and you will understand all of this. And there will be a great relief in that. Some of us like playing the game more than others of us. <laughs> and some of us are very happy to get out of the game. When I woke up in the hospital, I was very pissed off. I took one breath and looked around and went, oh no, I remembered. Now I'm stuck. And I was stuck. I was free before. And I was back in stuff. And I have been remembering and struggling with being back in this and I came back into the third dimension. So I'd been in a coma for 30 days, single mom. Everything I had was gone. Everything was gone. You don't, you don't come back from that. So I'm basically homeless and have no way to, re and they're telling me that my heart valves were eaten up. So I wouldn't, I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, I'd have to have surgery, which I couldn't do. And I had a 17 year old to take care of. So, yay, welcome back. So, no, I wasn't happy to be back at all. Uh, I, I, I tell people, this is not my kind of game. I play a different kind of game. It's very hard to explain what I like doing. Um, very, very hard to explain from this perspective. But um, I came for this planet because this planet has a consciousness. She is a friend of mine. And she came, she called for some assistance. And that is what I call a star seed. Our entities that came for the call from Gaia that she needed some to, some assistance. The planet is just like you. It has like you you were born and you will grow old and you will die. There's a there's a way. She is in the game, and her her, her lifetime's a lot different than yours. But she is ready to come out of the game, and she needed some some assistance. That call went out about the time. Two drop, uh, two uh, bombs dropped. Yeah. Atomic bombs. Yeah. And because already when this when this planet was first created, there was only one continent. There was water around it, and about the Atlantean and Lemurian time, is they were uh, actually a pretty good period of time, except that they were dealing with crystal energy, and they were very aware of crystal energy, and the two. Groups of people started fighting over control of the crystal energy on this planet. In that fight, there was a big blow up and all the continents were blown apart. Gaia said at that point, never again. I, I don't care. I, I've agreed to be this planet so you guys can play out your little game, but I'm not doing that again. So when the two bombs dropped, that's when she made her call and she went, uh-uh-uh, I'm out. If they're going to do this again, I'm out. So she is leaving. She's moving out. 
Now, it doesn't really matter. It won't affect anybody in the game. Anybody that's playing the game, they'll just be reborn on one of the other planets. There's about a billion of them now that have been created that are just like... This was the first planet that went to 3D in duality, in time-space. It was the first one that went this low. Now there are other <coughs> planets people can be reborn on, continue the game as long as they want. They'll not even know the difference. In the meantime, she's coming out. Almost all of this planet is now in fifth dimension. There's just fourth. a small, no, fifth. Oh, There's okay. only a small part of it that's in fourth. Yeah, sure. And she's um, trying to give, she, you know, all these skin suits are a part of her too. She doesn't want any of you guys to be in distress. So there, every option will be given to raise your vibration. If you don't, that's fine. There are multiple timelines. You can pick whichever one you want to live. If you are a... Uh, uh, Jesus coming down from the heavens and, you know, the devil wiping out the planet, you'll experience that. If you're a zombie apocalypse person, you'll experience that. If you believe that an asteroid's going to hit the planet and blow it up, you'll experience that. If you uh, frequent, there'll be a lot of people, that the alien ships will come and say, come get off, come with me. Well, and what you will see... Are right. Yep. All, everybody's right. You're God. You get to have whatever you want. You get to experience whatever you want. Timelines. Timelines. I still don't quite understand. I mean, I understand that we can change our future by making a decision now. Is that the same thing as a different timeline? That, that's what I call different timelines. And okay. the reason why that's a problem or it's, it's difficult is because the consciousness of you that is in this room right this second... You are way bigger than this. It's like you take a little part of you and you go, okay, I'm going to throw it down and I'm going to put it in this human to experience this. Now, on top of that, there are quite a few, there are infinite timelines. Long-term human, the more you've been here, the more timelines you have. And with each timeline, there's a little bit of you in each one experience. Them. These aren't make-believe. These are actually occurring. There are multiple use going 